Ruiz here at Bowman Library of the Whole New Teen Book Spotlight. So for this week, we are taking inspiration from stories that are fairy tale retellings. So what I love about these stories is they take a twist on maybe a classic fairy tale you may or may not know, but they add their own little special spin to it. Make it a little bit either more modern or another point of view or totally character reimaginations. So we have six amazing ones we're going to take a look at. So let's get started. Our first one is Entwined. So it's been hard of late for Princess Azalea and her 11 younger sisters, as they are all grieving the loss of their mother. And not only are they grieving the loss of their mother, in a sense, they're also grieving the loss of their father. He's really struggling with the death of his wife, and he has gone so far as to ban everything in the, in the, in the kingdom that could bring people happiness, including dancing, which is what Azalea and her 11 younger sisters love to do. Now, she thinks things are going to start changing though when she finds this secret passageway that when they enter it it brings them into this fantasy world in which they could do what they most want meaning they get to dance now it's there that they meet a man who's known as the keeper he kind of protects this land he lets people in and out type deal and it's while he's there allowing them to dance that he also wants something in return because everything comes with a price it may be too late though when Azalea figures out what is exactly going on and she, when she fully discovers and realizes the situation they are in, she has no idea if they're going to survive or it actually may come at too great a cost. This is part fantasy, there's some mystery in it, there is some romance, but there is some horror in it and some suspense at times, so there's a little bit of everything mixed in. This amazing relook at the 12 Dancing Princesses tale is one that will have you guessing with every page you turn. This is entwined. Gilded. So this retelling of Rumpled Stiltskin is turned on its head as the roles are reversed and you, you ponder this question of what would happen if Rumpled Stiltskin was actually the hero. So we start by meeting 18 year old Cyrilda and she loves to tell stories but she's also considered a little bit of an oddball and she's an outcast in their village. One evening though she does something she normally never does. There's this hunt that's going on, there's these hellhounds that are chasing after these moss maidens and she decides she's going to step outside and she's going to protect these two moss maidens. When she does this though she has no idea that she's actually incurring the wrath of the Dark King because he's the one who's trying to hunt them. When he finds that what's happened, all Cyrilla has is her tongue, is her stories, and she ends up having this moment in which in her fast thinking she she finds herself talking and spinning this tale and then the Dark King believes her and before she before she knows it she finds herself in the castle dungeon being kept there because she has told him that she can take gold, she can spin gold from straw, which is something she cannot do. It's when she meets this teenager though that's also in the castle, castle basement, dungeon area, his name is Guild, that he tells her that she he can do what she is being forced to do, what she says she can do, but she can't. But there's gonna have to be a price that's going to be paid, and it just goes from there. Now this story goes beyond what you think and know about this traditional fairy tale. It's not for the faint of heart, I will tell you that. There are some pretty graphic and gory descriptions and scenes that take place, but if you're into that type of stuff, I will tell you this, there's a sequel coming out like in a couple of weeks so you can read Gilded to get ready for the sequel, Gilded. Six Crips and Cranes. So when we meet Princess Shiori, she's getting ready to be married off to a man that she does not want to be with. And she's looking for anything, any way possible to get out of this engagement. It is then that she loses control of a paper bird that she's made with magic. And when this happens, she finds herself face to face with a shape-shifting dragon. When she gets over that shock and awe of this, she then learns that this dragon could also teach her magic. It's because of that though that Shiori's life changes when she witnesses her stepmother turn into her true form because her stepmother isn't a human. In fact, her stepmother is actually a legit demon. And then in order to like to punish her even further, Shiori's six older brothers, the stepmother turns them into cranes from humans. Shiori is then told that if she tells anyone, one of her brothers will die. 
So she finds herself being completely silent, she can't share this with anyone, and she needs to survive on her own for the first time if she's going to live and save her brothers. This first in a series, there's a second book coming. You will want to read it because it is one that is filled with nonstop action. It's adventure, there's mixed in, there's a combination of Western plus Asian folklore and fairy tales. Loved this one, it has a strong female character, doesn't let anything stop her. This is Six Crimson Grays. Forest of a Thousand Lanterns. So Zi Fang is 18 years old and she's destined to become the empress of a kingdom called Feng Lu. But no one really knows that part. Now she's growing up in a poor village where manual labor and starvation is the norm. And it's only because of this like tarot card reading that her aunt did when she was younger that she got this prediction that she was going to become the empress of the kingdom. That this has been held on to ever since by Zifeng and her family, including especially her aunt. Now armed with this prophecy, Zifeng makes her way to the capital city when she turns 18 with the goal of getting a job in the palace. Okay, and maybe then when she's in the palace, then she can start to fulfill her destiny of becoming empress of this kingdom. But life in the palace, she soon learns, is not any easier than in the village. And there's a whole other different set of struggles and problems that she will face both inward and outward. This is the first of a trilogy. It's inspired by Asian mythology, fairy tales, and folklore. This is one, again, another one, not for the faint of heart. Apparently that's part of our theme this week. It's, there are some pretty gory descriptions. There are some bloody events. There are some fights that take place. But you will not be able to put this one down. Because you're going to be trying to figure out how everything's going to play out. Because you're, you're figuring out who's on what side, who can you trust, along with our main character, a forest of a thousand lanterns. A curse so dark and lonely. So in this retelling of Beauty and the Beast, we meet Harper, who has not had the easiest life. Not only is her mother fighting cancer and her brother is caught up in loan sharks, she also has cerebral palsy, which can make life really difficult for her at times physically. One evening, she's out on the streets of Washington, D.C., helping her brother when she sees this man that she doesn't know, but she sees this man and he's carrying this unconscious woman. And she, she decides she has to intervene. Like something, that you can't do that. This isn't right. So when she does intervene though, all of a sudden she finds herself transported to this cursed kingdom of Emberfall. And she, she learns that she is part of this plan that is needed to break the curse that's holding the kingdom. But her part of this plan is she's going to have to fall in love with the prince. And he has his own set of issues and she isn't completely sold that the solution to this kingdom, you know, the promise of this kingdom is them falling in love. This is the first in a completed trilogy. You will not be able to put this one down. Check out the whole series. We have all three books, including the first one here. There are the inevitable cliffhangers, so you're not gonna wanna wait. Check out all of them. This is a car curse so dark and lonely. And our last one for this week is another Beauty and the Beast retelling, but what I had to share about this one is because it's almost completely different from our one that we just talked about. In Beastly, in this modern take on Beauty and the Beast, we meet Kyle Kingsbury. And he is the top guy at his rich private high school. He's considered to be good looking, he's rich, he's a ladies man who will stop at nothing to get what he wants. And as a result, that makes him arrogant, cruel, and selfish, especially to people that he doesn't like or doesn't know. It is when a girl named Kendra calls him Beastly that Kyle cannot take it anymore. He's been greatly insulted, so he decides he is going to get back at her. And he his perfect plan is to humiliate her at the upcoming school dance, which is exactly what he does. Only this whole idea, this plan starts to backfire because it is after this moment when, he, when he's done this incredible humiliating event, that Kendra reveals her her true self and that's not she's not just a human she's in fact a witch and to get back at Kyle she then puts a curse on him and that's it. what the curse is that his inward appearance is then reflected on his outward and the only way he can break this curse is to find a girl who he can love and will love him back and he only has two years to do this and if he doesn't do it then he's going to remain the way he looks 
for the rest of his life. Now this is told through Kyle's point of view, and you may think you know where this one's headed, but I can promise you it's not gonna go where you think. I also love this one because it is the point of view of the beast, which is a voice we normally don't get to hear a ton of. Highly encourage this one. It is a pretty short, quick read. This is Beastly. So these are the six little books that we have here at the library that are fairy tale inspired, fairy tale retellings. Encourage you to come on out, check out one of them. We do a plenty of others too. So if there's a specific fairy tale you're looking for and you want to get a, a new twist, a new viewpoint on, come on out. We will help you find whatever that perfect book is you are looking for. I hope you have an amazing week and I hope you tune back next week when we have a whole new Teen Book Spotlight.